the Deputy Minister of Defense and Military Veterans, Taban Makwetla, has expressed shock at the withdrawal of the case against 52 struggle war veterans. Now, the veterans, you will recall, they held 26 people hostage, including the minister in the presidency, Mondli Kungubele, the defense minister, Tandi Motise, and her deputy, who is Tabang Makwetla, and uh, he sits with me in studio this morning. Mr. Makwetla, thank you very much for making the time. You've expressed shock at the withdrawal of this case. Let's first understand your standpoint when this matter happened. Did you lay a charge? Were you a complainant? Did you make a statement to law enforcement at all? Because if you are going to ex express shock around what has happened now, you would need to have been a complainant in the first place. Uh, Thank you once again to, for hosting us in your studios. Thank you, sir. And morning to your viewers. Uh, no, the communication around this matter has been by the journalist who uh, reported mm. uh, about it after I received a call. Uh, to say that I was shocked, I mean, that's uh, the journalist's impression about it. Mm. Um, what uh, happened is that uh, the journalist broke news to me over something I was a development I was not aware of. Yeah. And, uh, of course, I was, uh, I was puzzled because uh, as far as I knew is that the case was on, um, and I gave a statement mm -hmm. uh, on my part of what happened on the day mm -hmm. and uh, we were under the impression that the NPA was uh, proceeding with the case mm -hmm. but uh, as you now know uh, they decided to withdraw the case uh, because uh, they, I am told, uh, believe it's not a winnable case. Now, I don't know, I've not been briefed uh, by anyone, not the investigating officer uh, or the prosecution uh, about uh, their decision. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that's where the matter is at. Do you intend to do anything about it or you're just going to let sleeping dogs lie? Well, Look, as far as I am concerned, an infringement was committed, uh, uh, and the law had to take its course. Mm -hmm. um, but if the legally wise people say this is not a winnable case, I do not know the facts. Uh, on which that conclusion is based, they yeah. know better. And uh, I have confidence in the prosecution authorities of this country. And uh, uh, I'm happy to accept their, their decision over it. Um, added to that, of course, is uh, my consideration that uh, the, event, the events of the day were just unfortunate. Uh, which are unfortunate because we from the ministry are very keen and concerned and really want to get the, you know, the lives of our military veterans changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything that detracts us from that, anything that interferes mm -hmm. with our efforts in that direction, uh, it's, a, it's a negative that uh, we would want to actually get out of the equation. So uh, what happened on the day, the hostage at St. George's, for me it was uh, most unfortunate and it was a huge inconvenience because it then got us into a spin of negativity yeah. with military veterans that we thought we were now working with in a way that uh, meaningfully was uh, getting us somewhere. So it is clear 
yeah. on your part. Yeah. Yeah. I may not have had sight of your statement, but mm -hmm. it is clear mm -hmm. that in that statement, mm -hmm. you were held against your will. Of on course, that's what That's happened. why you say yes, it, that's what it was a hostage situation. That's what happened on the day. How do you not get consulted if the case is going to be withdrawn? Well, I can't answer to that, but that's what has happened. And I'm saying to me, it's, uh, it's, not a, it's not a big issue because the big problem is that we need to be in the right space with our military veterans. I put it to, to you. To, to collaborate in dealing with the challenges they are facing and to be in a relationship that is conflictual. It's not assisting us. I put it to you, Deputy Minister, mm -hmm. that this is political capitulation because in order for the veterans to get what they are looking for, mm -hmm. they cannot use means of violence. There was violence on the day. People were let out in stretchers. People were held hostage. In fact, there was talk of um, very serious crimes such as terrorism because you were government ministers being held against your will so for a case to fizzle out just like that and you're not willing to do anything about it it tells me at least uh, the one uh, south african that you're willing to overlook this for political Expediency. What, what is it? Is it because it's a it's a it's a it's an ANC election year? What exactly? I'll be I'll be disappointed if the NPA took uh, their decision on the basis of some political consideration because I don't expect them to do so. Hmm. Um, it is not us who have decided to withdraw the case. As but I'm saying, but you're not willing to do anything no. about it either. Uh, I am not willing to take up a state agency as a state employee myself mm. on a matter which uh, in relation to the mandate belongs within their province. They made the judgment call. I don't know what it is based on. Mm. I can only have confidence that whatever consideration was made on the matter, it's a legal consideration. But if yeah. it's a political, then if the NPA is taking political decisions mm -hmm. in dealing with the criminal activity, I mean, uh, matters that are brought for their, you know, uh, 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 prosecution, then you'd appreciate that they would be going into a very problematic space. All right, let me turn away from this subject and perhaps as a final question to you, uh, bring your attention to a matter that we never really got to address with you, although you did say in other media spaces that you were going to challenge the outcomes of the third report of the Zonda Commission, which said that you should be looked into criminally. Where do things stand right now? Well, I did not say I will take the Zondo Commission on, uh, on review. Mm. What I said is that uh, the Zondo Commission's uh, recommendations must be implemented as a matter of urgency because the Zondo Commission's recommendation is that uh, uh, the NPA must consider, it is leaving it to the, con to the NPA to consider charging me yeah. if after investigation, there is material that suggests that I was involved in corruption. Now, what's so your quibble with now, that? My query with that is that the Zondo, com I mean, the Commission on State Capture, I'm sorry, was established to investigate allegations of corruption. And they took a whole five years on that assignment. And it shocked me that at the end they could say we have not investigated allegations of corruption against this person but but we leave it to the prosecution to decide whether they want to prosecute him or not mm -hmm. but if they so 
uh, decide to prosecute him, they must investigate. I mean, what is that? That is the one... Can, can, the can, one. can I quickly follow up on that? Yes. It's a quasi-judicial process, mm -hmm. that commission of inquiry. Okay. That tells you mm -hmm. that it may not necessarily work as a court process. Yes, it has investigative powers, mm -hmm. but it cannot... Um, you cannot take its recommendations on face value and say we're going to court based on this. It, it, much like the SIU works, for example. So why do you find that strange? Or is this about swaying attention and trying to throw mud at a process that the country needed in order to deal decisively with corruption? Um, you know, I don't think we are going to have time to you know, talk to this issue. I agree with you. Yeah. The issue is that uh, the commission <clears throat> was uh, tasked to, in my understanding, to go into allegations of corruption mm -hmm. and establish if there's a prima facie case on each one of the cases that were brought uh, before it. Okay. And on the basis of the investigation, that they would have done, there would be material sufficient enough to be presented before the courts to say, here wrongdoing has happened. Okay? That has not happened. They have not investigated from what they are saying, the allegations of corruption. But you know why they have not investigated allegations of corruption? Mm -hmm. It's because there was nothing put before the commission about corruption against Makwek. It's not there. What they are saying must be investigated is what they had from me, what I told the commission, which is I met Kevin Watson, Mr. Watson, after he had requested a meeting, and I explained what the meeting was about. There's no other person and there's no other evidence before the commission that suggested that I was involved in, uh, in corruption. It was on the basis of what I told the commission. And they say, they are saying, we did not investigate what happened after the meeting of Mr. Makweta and Kevin Watson if he has actually not influenced the department to decide in favor of Kevin Watson, but that's what they should have investigated. Yeah. And I've said, I have said, I want that investigation to be done as soon, as, soon yesterday. as yesterday. And if there is any evidence of any wrongdoing on my part, then, then I must be charged immediately. All immediately. Right. We'll await what the law enforcement processes are going to reveal. But I can't wait. You know? I can't wait. I've waited for five years. And I'm saying that they must investigate me and charge me for what they believe was the involvement of Mr. Makweta in corruption. All right. Let's leave it there. That's uh, the Deputy Minister of uh, Defense and Military Veterans, Tabang Makweta. I thank you very much for your time, sir.